Well, hello there. My name is Sometimes Heather and I play Old School Sunlight. A while back, I started thinking about vampires and the Citrix skill line. I wanted to try something out and selected Elsie as my test subject. Though she's been a vampire before, though briefly, I figured this might be a good time to share with you a little checklist of things to get prior to kneeling at the altar. Let's get started. Becoming a vampire unlocks a brand new skill line with one ultimate, five active abilities and six passives. If you want to level all the abilities and their moves, you'll need 12 skill points. The passives require 10 more. In total, that's 22 skill points. Having that many lying around is a bit unusual, so chances are you're going to need to find some more, quickly. Gathering sky shards is an easy way to pick up a point or two. You'll need to find and absorb three sky shards in order to get one skill point. Each continent has plenty of sky shards and many of them rest in plain sight. Completing a public dungeon group event for the first time grants an entire skill point, and so does completing the group dungeon story quest. This is a fun way to get more points, but if you're a veteran player, you've already done them. Public dungeons are highly entertaining, so if you haven't gathered all the skill points related to them, this might be a fun option. Completing story quests in all continents also gives you skill points. Each stage in the main quest also grants one. You can also earn skill points by completing the story quests in Nature's Guild, Fighter's Guild, Thief's Guild and Dark Brotherhood. The latter two are a bit slow to advance through, so they might not be the best choices. Through a combo of questing, collecting sky shards, and having fun in public dungeons, gathering up skill points should be relatively fast. I would suggest saving your build before going to the altar. I've made a video about how to toggle vampirism on and off using the armory station, so maybe watch that next. Saving your build is a good idea for one big reason. You might not like being a vampire after all, and having your old build to return to saves you from a lot of trouble. The armory trick comes in really handy if you only have one character and would like to alternate between being a vamp and a non-vamp. Then you need to procure a bite. I recommend using the zone chat or asking friends if they can spare a bite. It's easy, convenient and free. You can find three vampire altars in the game. One in Reaper's March, one in Bungarai, and one in the Rift. You can use any of these altars regardless of your faction. You can only be bitten at these altars. An amusing thing happened with RCV. I went to the altar with Charming, who had agreed to inflict me yet again, healed a stranger because that's what I do, and they gave me a bite. If the kind stranger happens to be watching this, thank you. I will pass the favor along. Once the ritual is complete, you need to complete a quest. Only after are you a true vampire. As you come out as a vampire, the urge to feed is strong. Almost impossible to resist. After all, we're here to immerse, and is there a better way to get under a vampire's skin than to feed on innocent blood? Feeding advances your vampire stage, and as you reach stage 4, NPCs refuse to barter. You can get around this by using Mesmerize on bankers and merchants, but since Mesmerize comes available as you reach level what, 5 or 6 in the vampire skill line, this won't work right away. Vampire stage goes down really slow, but there is a way around it. You can toggle vampirism on and off with your armory station, or you can drink Purify and Bloody Mara to drop a stage. Or you can find the merchants and bankers that don't give a rat's ass about your condition. There are a few in the game. All Last undaunted vendors stop? will still Do speak with you after you become a stage 4 vampire, and so will the impresario and her assistant. There are others scattered around the game, 
but these ones are constant and easy to find. There's also a banker who will gladly do business with a state for vampire. That's Andro Salvino in Vivac City. He's located behind the bank building. I go to him often when I need a banker. Your own personal assistants will naturally speak with you, but they won't fix your gear or take guild store listings. For these activities, it's good to know who to turn to. Pack merchants, the NPCs who increase your inventory size, are a bit trickier. They all seem to be immune to mesmerize, except one. The only one who will speak with you as you are a stage 4 vampire is Ardenling Sauer. She's located in Cold Harbor at the Hollow City Marketplace. In order to gain access to her, you'll need to complete the Cold Harbor story questline. That takes a long time, so it's much easier to either purchase necessary inventory slots before coming a vampire, or while you're on stage 3 or lower. After becoming a stage 4 vampire, you'll notice that your ability to regenerate health is gone. All gone, poof gone, bye bye. You'll need to find a way around that too. I've made a video on how to survive as a stage 4 vampire. In that, I list various ways to keep your health up. I want to test a healer build with RCB here, so I think she'll be fine without additional tricks. But if you play a solo DD, it's really important to figure out a way around the no health regeneration penalty. I rely on critical search with Sorks pretty often, but there are many other abilities and even armor that helps. Unlocking a skill line with a lot of abilities to level up means you need a way to get experience. As quickly as possible, of course. For this, you'll need XP scrolls and, optionally, training gear. I would try to time the process of becoming a vampire to events that grant double XP. Leveling up abilities can be slow, so it might be smart to get all the help you can. I don't have the patience to wait right now, so I'll rely on scrolls. Experience scrolls can be bought from the crown store, but they're also available as daily rewards. ESO gives you a little present every time you log in. Every month you can find several XP scrolls among daily rewards. This is the easiest way to get XP scrolls and trust me when I'm saying that one 150% booster goes a long way. In my experience, the fastest way to level up both your character and their skill lines is to go to Greklon's Spellscar area and kill every mob you see. There are a lot of enemies, they spawn fast and hence accumulating experience is super fast. I go there often when I need to level up a new ability fast. Maybe you've seen me there with my own vampire. The Spellscar area isn't impossible to solo, but bringing friends makes grinding more fun. Now that we are, once again, a vampire, let's recap. Before turning yourself into a monster, make sure you have a lot of inventory space and or a personal merchant. 22 skill points to spend. A friend to bite you. Your current build saved. Friendly merchant and banker locations memorized. Purifying Bloody Marrow recipe learned. XP scrolls and training gear. Two hours to grind. A way to stay alive figured out. Madness that matches that of Uncle Shale. I do hope this little checklist helps you on your way toward that person. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all later. Done.